coming at you from a bulletproof bunker just outside Celestia's Castle. It's Equestria Redacted, and I am your host, Ephraim Josie. Now, before we begin, I'd like to say that if you also like my brony content, you may like my political content, a.k.a. the Ephraim Josine Show, which, as of next week, halfway through next week to be exact, is going to be moving to the Ephraim Report channel, which there is a link in the description for. There will also... Um, there's also a blog, also named the Ephraim Report, which you can find at ephraimjocene.blogspot.com, which isn't just me, by the way, it's a combination of me and a few other people. Now, as has been established last week, there's not going to be a new MLP episode for about another month. However, that doesn't mean there's not any new content. In fact, a new Equestria Girl special aired just yesterday. Now, I'm going to be honest, I had mixed feelings on Equestria Girls. I've seen all four movies, one of the um, Tales from Canelot High specials, and only one hour long special, which is the one I'm about to review. But, to make it real quick, I liked the second and third movie. I remember really disliking the first one, although I can't remember exactly why off the top of my head, because I only saw it years ago. And the fourth one, I remember seeing it. And that's it. I remember there was a point in my life I did watch the fourth Equestria Girls movie. I don't remember what happened in it per se, or even what I felt about it, but I remember I did watch it. Anyway, that brings us to today's special. No, well, not really. My Little Pony Equestria Girls Roller Coaster of Friendship. What happens? Well, a new theme park is opening up. That theme park is called Equestria Land. Very creative name, by the way. And is ran by someone named Vigette, who is a social media celebrity. And, however, no, she can't get everything perfect. Now, I'm just going to say this right now. I love Vigette. I love hating her, but I still love her. She's, remember how I said in, um, Fake It Till You Make It, that this show had just absolutely went hard on, like, city dwellers and people like that? This is their, this is, like, their comeback to that. And it is amazing. She's one of these new age, one of her lines is literally, don't use the B word, I'm your friend who likes to boss you around. The B word, of course, being boss. And I absolutely find it hilarious, honestly. This whole special is really funny, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Essentially, she has the philosophy of BYBB, be yourself, but better, which I must say is a three fire emoji philosophy. However, she just can't get everything perfect. And she just sort of wishes she could get everything perfect. And luckily for her, Magic enters her phone. I'm not sure. How, okay. This is going to sound. I haven't watched much Equestria Girls, especially recently. So forgive me if I'm a little out of touch in the deep lore. But how? Just, just how? Just, how is there magic in this universe? Isn't the whole idea of Equestria Girls that's supposed to take place in our world? I don't know if you haven't noticed, Hasbro, but come over here. Our world doesn't have magic in it. Just figured you should know. I mean, in the first movie, Sunset was a student of Twilight, uh, not Twilight, of Princess Celestia, so it makes sense she knew some. Second movie, um, Rainbow Rocks, the Sirens were banished from another dimension, and they were actually in a question for a while. Again, makes sense. Third movie, um, normal Twilight, who not the same Twilight from the first two movies. It's kind of confusing. Builds a device that can harness magic energy. I Okay, a little weird she can build that, but okay. Legend of Everfree. Magic just exists. I don't know if you knew that, but magic just exists. I, I'm genuinely asking, is there an explanation I just forgot? But how do the Equestria Girls come into this? I mean, after all, 
The special is called Equestria Girls, well, My Little Pony Equestria Girls. Well, it's very simple. Applejack and Rarity try to get a job as a Caramel Apple Girls for this theme park. Rarity was upgraded to lead fashion designer, and Applejack wasn't hired. However, um, Vingette actually does want the Rainbooms to play at the opening ceremony for the amusement park. So she does actually try and get them all together and all of that. However, things don't quite go her way as she wants. Essentially, you know the chart guys from the Nostalgia Critic series? Well, she's essentially just that. <laughs> Except more, actually kind of hip and with it, unlike the chart guys where the entire joke was, they weren't. Essentially, she just speaks in, it's kind of like techno babble, but that's what Twilight does, except her techno babble is pop techno babble, which is like normal techno babble, but only kind of more annoying, in my opinion. Actually, while I mentioned the rain booms, I just want to point this out. Has anyone actually noticed that they, well, rainbow up? Like, in this movie, they're clearly seen doing it in front of a giant audience. Did they just, did the entire audience just assume it's part of the show? Does anybody know that they actually do have magical power stemming from the alternate universe? Um, is it, have scientists studied this yet, or do they get a patent on it that causes them to not be able to? Was that an official act of Congress? <laughs> I missed that that day, I'm sorry. But when Vegette can't get things to go her way, they she simply takes pictures of them and they just disappear. Um, and by the way, the funniest joke in the movie involves um, where they disappear to. I normally don't care about spoilers. I'm not gonna dare ruin that one for you. It is truly amazing. Applejack catches on, though, mainly because of paranoia, since Rarity s sort of implied that Vangette was her new best friend, and by that I mean directly said that, and tries to stop her, and now it's time for a little spoiler, I know, in case you thought. <laughs> yeah, they also had that second act thing where they hate each other, Rarity and Applejack, who at this point in the movie are the only ones who haven't had pictures taken of them. And, of course, they get back together and save the day, just in case you didn't think they'd do that in a My Little Pony movie. Um, but, uh, honestly, I thought this movie was really funny. Like, just really funny. You know, I love when uh, Vegette is talking in all this, like, again, pop techno babble, as I call it. Um, when trying to discuss, oh, the rain moves, they're like, blah, 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 and then Pinky just says in this robotic voice, We make songs together! I love that. I love the line, delusional isn't your color, you're clearly an autumn. I just absolutely went crazy over that line. It's one of the funniest things I've seen. Uh, there's a joke where they go and they disappear. Again, I'm not going to dare ruin that. I also, I also find it hilarious how paranoid Rarity gets as the thing goes on and the parade just comes closer and closer. And she even has all her assistants. Like, there's even a bit where she has this giant pile of clothes she screams into and later on it just, Get me more clothes to scream in! This is hilarious. If this is the EQG specials, hour-long specials, I hope there are many more. Because this is the hardest I've laughed in an MLP episode in a long time. Like, I don't think I've laughed this hard since either horseplay or fake it till you make it. The, the entire joke with, Char with Twilight and Sunset at the ring toss, that was absolutely amazing. Okay, it, it sounds like I'm praising this, and I am. I absolutely love it. But in the interest of being fair, there are a few issues I had. Uh, most notably, Rarity and Applejack do that thing near the end of the second act where they start to hate each other, and then they go to apologize, and at this point it's been well proven that Applejack was completely right, Rarity was completely wrong, because Rarity was defending Baggett, um, and Applejack, you know, was saying, no, she's doing all these bad things. And then, you know, Rarity starts like, oh, I'm sorry, turns out I was wrong, and then Applejack is like, oh, no, actually, I was also um, looking for things to hate about Baggett. Um, because I was just worried you'd stop being my friend. And I'm just sitting here thinking, why does that matter how you found this information? This is big information. 
that completely should have destroyed someone's career. Who cares if you were paranoid? It should have been like this. Rudy should have just said, Hey, I'm sorry for all of this. And Applejack just says, You should be. <laughs> but of course, they can't do that. For that matter, just before almost everyone has their picture taken, um, I think it's everyone but, let me think, Fluttershy, Rainbow Dash, both of which already had their picture taken and were transported, and Rarity, who was in the room at the time, you know, Applejack is calling out Baguette, essentially to her face, and she comes up with this excuse like, oh no, they're all just in the, war in the wardrobe, I believe is what she said. Like, why didn't Applejack just say, okay, let's go there? You know, let's just go there. Let's see. Let's just make sure. Like, it would have just taken that and then Baguette just saying, no. <laughs> and maybe adding, a, and if you do that, you're fired. You know, just that little 10 seconds could have saved me that annoyance. But overall, I loved this special. It is absolutely amazing, in my opinion. And you need to see it. So, can I recommend Equestria Girls Roller Coaster of Friendship? Yes. A hundred times, yes. The only, th the only other thing of note, really, though, is I feel the morals a little obvious. It's just the be yourself one, which again, it's MLP, so it's an Aesop-driven show, so that doesn't really bother me. But besides that, this thing is amazing, and you need to see it. I think it is about now, by the way. I address what was going to be the greatest thing I ever did. Which I did without even doing, by the way. You see, recently, there was a post over on E4B. It's, it was posted by Deaf Pony. Mm -mm. When someone tries to hack your Twitter again. So it's the same person who did it multiple times, by the way. Not just someone doing it once. Someone did this to him multiple times. And then he put out, I have an itching feeling. Now, at first I assumed he could just be implying it was me and maybe I'm just being paranoid. I mean, it's not like he's known for just making things up. However, then I checked the tags and I was confirmed. They are Hi Ephraim and a smiley face followed by How was trying that? Now I wasn't even aware I did it once, let alone could do it again without even doing it once. And normally I'd be very angry that he just levied baseless accusations against me. Um. <laughs> Then, I, I just checked my notes from the previous day, because I take those, just in case I sometimes forget things, because everybody forgets things, and it actually said, well, okay, it didn't include anything about hacking Deaf Pony's Twitter, maybe I just forgot to put it down, who knows. What I'm saying is, he levied a baseless accusation against me, and because of this, I'm doing this bit, so go thank him if you didn't find this funny. It is good to know I'm living rent-free inside his head, though. That is kind of fun, I have to admit. Anyway, in other news, Vita made a video explaining what a pedophile is. After people were defending Anthony Aguilar, a.k.a. FNGR, when people were referring to him as a pedophile. Or when Vita was referring to him as a pedophile. It was a clear, concise video using only the DSM-5. Which, if you do not know, is basically the Dictionary for Medical Conditions. Now, I'm a little bit on the fence on whether or not I think there's sufficient evidence to believe it. However, I lean towards... eh... I don't know. However! Then came... That kid, Douglas. We've talked about him once before. If you don't remember him, I sent him a cease and desist that he has not responded to. It was a very serious cease and desist, might I add. That was completely meant to be taken. Oh, you know, bit at this point.
But he made a video proving Vito wrong, and his entire argument came down to this. You see, because supposedly FNGR did pedophilic ERPing, aka erotic roleplaying, with Buttons, that would also mean Buttons is a pedophile. Yeah, that's how words work, I'll give you that much. Here's my question though, Douglas, how does that prove Vita wrong exactly? The answer is simple, it doesn't. Yes. More than one person who exists in the fandom is a pedophile by this definition. Do you believe that if everyone is a pedophile, nobody, nobody is? Because if so, that's just stupid. Partly because, I hope at least, not everyone is a pedophile in this fandom, and partly because that's just not how words work. One last thing to note about Douglas, by the way. His video was 15 minutes long. This video has also been 15 minutes long so far. I debunked his video in about two minutes, and that was all he said for the 15 minutes, by the way. Anyway, this story requires a little bit of backstory, so I'm going to give it real quick. Essentially, a guy who considers himself a drama pwn, um, he said that I could just call him a coward, so that's going to be his name from here on out. So, coward, as I call him, uh, said, hey, me and another drama pwn, or another person who's a little bit of an insider too, we have this information, this is really good, it could cause people to hate all that stuff. Apparently, uh, this guy has tried showing it to a few of Keyframe's friends, and they all essentially had the same reaction. But it's Keyframe, so we're just gonna let her get away with this. Now, I'm gonna read the post, and if you're a fan of this channel, you may have, this may sound kind of familiar to you, I'll get to why it sounds familiar in a minute. Uh, but just remember, this has been really controversial as of recently. It's a vlog post from her. It starts off with that meme, you know, love is love, not gender, not race, not religion, and not age. And the age is 16 for the female and 36 for the male. And then it shows the fish guy from Spongebob with eggs and looking kind of suspicious. Now, Key did not post all of this. A&Y posted some of this, and I'm going to read it right now. But, um, this is from A&Y. Admitted, among all those examples, this is one with the highest risk of abuse... Yes, by definition, um, a 16-year-old dating a 36-year-old in most states is considered abuse on one end. Sadly, cross-religion relationships can easily turn abusive as well, as I know through friends, but at least we can assume that there are mature people able to consent involved. However, as the message says, love is love. I'm just going to say this. Now, I don't know if ANY is in any way gay. Maybe he has friends who are. I don't know. But I am a firm believer that the only way homosexuals got any rights, in my country at least, and in most of the civilized world, was by distancing themselves from pedophiles. You implying that expression implies to pedophile, which is what this is, by the way. If it's below the age of consent, it is pedophilia, and 20-year age difference, 16, 36, there's not even room for debate there. It kind of annoys me. I know minors who are more mature than some people because in their entire lifetime and the other way around, or become in their entire lifetime and the other way around. Yeah, you want to know why we have um, age of consent, A and Y? It's mostly for simplicity, unless you believe we should start handing out sex licenses. What would that even look like? I also know adults who should never get any responsibilities, not even for a goldfish. Yes. And we also don't let politically active 13-year-olds vote, and we let non-politically active 50-year-olds vote. What's up with that? It's a convenience thing, moron. Age of consent is a good... <laughs> and sadly... <laughs> 
He actually put sadly there. Interpret that however you want. Necessary concept in order to protect minors from abuse. But, as every rule has exceptions, so should this one. I'm not even going to comment on that. Yes, such a couple should first get the approval of the minor's guardians. So, I take it he's kind of a fan of arranged marriages, just given that sentence. Assuming a bit naively here they are. Okay, so only smart people should get arranged married. Okay. But it should not be denied by default. Just for context, I personally prefer my partners or potential partners to be in their mid-twenties or older. If someone hasn't even left their teens yet, I highly doubt we will have enough common ground for a functioning relationship. So he sort of tried to backpedal there, like, no, I'm I'm not going to do this. But if other people want to, he just that sort of backpedal that kind of bothers me. Uh, here is what Key said, and this is the one that actually is controversial, which is kind of confusing, because what Key says is a lot less offensive than what A and Y said. Uh, here's what Key had to say. Agreed. While I understand what the original creator for this post is going for, there are always exceptions for the rule given the situation and the partners involved. There are quite a few situations where the younger of this relationship is mentally... Uh, is mentally and developmentally, th those are kind of the same thing, more mature than their biological age. Age is just a number. This is essentially what she said. She danced around and used more, I don't know, PC for the lack of a better term, wording, but that's essentially what she said. It's especially difficult for early bloomers who develop emotionally, physically, and sexually before their peers. Again, what would you prefer? We give, a, we give people sex licenses? I started puberty when I was only seven. Top ten things that I totally believe. And reached full extent of it, height, cup size, etc. by 13 through 14 years old. I felt out of place in my age range. Age range, sorry. A, a lot of people do, but okay. Both in platonic and romantic situations. Most guys didn't fit my personal physical preference in the development stage. A, a little nitpick, but that typically happens no matter what because men start puberty a little later than women do. Uh, I, I know that's extremely trivial, but it, it's just one of those things that bothers me a little. Or maturity-wise, a lot of my friends would have relationships that would last a week and break up like it's the end of the world. I just felt more comfortable around older people and thus felt more attracted to ones I connected with. Hell, me and Golden Fox are nine years apart and we have a meaningful relationship I know I wouldn't have been able to have with someone my age. Now, I mentioned earlier, this may sound familiar to fans of the channel, and you may be wondering why. It's because I already covered this about a year ago. It was, in the video, Keyframe A and Y and E4B, because E4B um, responded to this, sort of defend pedophilia, and I'm going to just drop the sort of and say, they did. They danced around it, but they did did. I was being nice before, because that was before uh, tons of people in the fandom turned out to be pedophiles. I'm not softening anymore. They actively did. And that this post was about a year old when I found it originally. And just now, it is starting to cause any sort of inner drama. Essentially, what I am getting at is this is why we need to hold people in the fandom accountable. Now, to be fair, it's it's completely possible the information I got was false or I was lied to. However, the fact is, let's assume that that is the case and no one's actually talked about this and no one's came to Keyframe or anyone in the fandom about it and no one went, oh, you know, it's Keyframe, who cares? That makes it worse. 
that actively makes it worse. And don't think I'm going to forgive A.N.Y. for his role in this, by the way. And this is why I've said it time and time again. One of the first reasons I started doing brony videos is people need to hold the top fry in the fandom accountable. I've been saying that for years, and this is what happens when you don't. I'm Ephraim, and good night.